Get ready to see an ad agency the way you've never seen it before. We ventured into the core of MSC Saatchi to study creatives in their natural habitat. It's 11 a.m. and people are already coming to work. As you can see, creatives travel in pairs. And we believe they are cold-blooded as they are always seen close to a heat source. At the heart of the agency, they have this intriguing sculpture. We can only assume it is a shrine raised in honor of their gods. They offer it food sacrifices every day in order to keep the gods pleased. Look, we can see one of them paying his respects. We want to take a closer look at the creatives and their habits. This unsuspecting target is clearly the best specimen to start with. What the fuck are you doing? Oh no! We have to distract him! <sighs> that was a close one. This individual is sleeping. Let's see if we have more luck with him. We did not have any luck studying the creatives closer. However, we can get a hint of their culture and civilization from these masterpieces exhibited on the walls. Indeed, this is truly amazing. But what does it mean? Most creatives are very territorial. The lesser creatures, however, don't have their own space and are always pushed away by the dominant ones and have to fend for themselves. Upon studying them for two months, we noticed a pattern in their behavior. Each week, they perform a ritualistic gathering around their fearless and majestic leader. We believe he tells them tales about their ancestors. Obviously, they do this next to a shrine. We believe that they practice the art of peacocking to show their dominance in front of the weaker specimens. During research, we came upon the realization that two out of five people have a food fetish. With 498 employees, that means that roughly 200 people at MS Saatchi are sexually aroused by feet. It can be anyone, even one's creative partner. It's safe to say we didn't want to address the subject of mating any further. It's the end of the day here in the agency, but there is no one about. The creatives must have gone to find shelter for the night. But where?